Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. Worship your holy name. I will worship your holy name. Worship your 
Sing this with me, sing. Oh, in the cross, oh, in the cross is my glory forever, and my raptured soul now finds his glory flowing in the river. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory. This glory flowing in the river. Hallelujah. <laughs> flowing in the river. Yeah. Flowing, flowing in the river. <laughs> flowing, flowing in the river. Hallelujah. Flowing, flowing in the river. Flowing, flowing in the river. Oh, the river, the river of God, flowing, flowing in the river. Hallelujah. Flowing, flowing in the river. Sabela ki seleman blang dira, selele sudura rea, segalele ki neman engera. Flowing, flowing in the river. Ha ha ha. Flowing, flowing in the river. Alan Jalaman dira. Flowing, flowing in the river. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh God, my King, my glorious Lord and King. Hallelujah. <laughs> flowing, flowing in the river. Living, living in the river. Moving, moving in the river. Walking, walking in the river. Living, living in the river. <laughs> the river, the river, the river. Streams that make glad the city of God. Hallelujah, the new Jerusalem. <laughs> Flowing, flowing in the river. Living, living in the river. Moving, moving in the river. Streams that make glad the city of our God. Hallelujah. 
streams that make glad the city of our God. Living, living in the river. <laughs> flowing, flowing in the river. <laughs> moving, moving to the river. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rabba, baba, bitea. Arabba, baba, pasiapa. Arabba, baba, keapa, tie. Zopokoti, serebeko, brata soto, ibrabato, serebeko. Mundole, sirabero, mungele, galamongore, ni serebeto, manane. Sokoti, nayeke, maleo, mangeo, mandera di apro, mamana. Segoto, mandera, mamandera, mamalia, bara de rutara. Ale. Segali, namana, nena, mi branengo, kinangeje. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a river. The streams whereof make glad the city of God. There is a river. <laughs> there is a river. Ikaro mong jekala mangele manga na nubara. Jekerero mangale nana ne malikataya. There is a river. Hallelujah. There is a river. <laughs> Flowing from my belly. Just like the river flowing from the throne of God. Thank you for the river, Lord. <laughs> thank, thank you for the river, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice with a song and a shout. <laughs> Lift up your voice with a praise. Lift up your voice, lift him up, lift him up. Lift up your voice with the praise, the sound of praise. Hallelujah. Mandela Mange Ramon Vedeto. Hey, there is a realm of joy. There is a realm of glory. There is a realm of thanksgiving that you can enter into if you just lift up your voice and begin to shout with praises to the Most High God, the Lord, hallelujah, the Lord of glory, the Ancient of Days, hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah, in spirit and in truth. Oh God, we worship you. Hallelujah. Blessed is your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Stand there and receive. <laughs> Amangana manje no mongre ve araya. Damla mande blai no blai. Damla no mongje le mane yataya. Everybody say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Thank you, living God. If you would just receive, you'd be overwhelmed with the presence of God. You'd never be the same. Turn me up.
Praise your holy name, Lord. <laughs> we praise your holy name, Lord. We praise your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise your holy name, Almighty God. We praise your holy name, Lord. Kurama manjera bati lelele vi broso tolo mangera bebele de rebe. Sokori barara si brebe yolo boroma. Sokori bari bebe riba botoro mamani. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> do what you can do without a without a worship team. Do what you can do right wherever you may be found in the day tomorrow and this throughout this week. Just worship Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Him, praise Him. All your saints now praise Him. <laughs> praise Him, praise Him. All your saints now praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him. All your saints now praise Him. Praise the Lord. Praise Him, praise Him. All your saints now praise him. Well, you know, I'm I'm hallelujah. We're hallelujah. <laughs> praise him, praise him. All your saints now praise him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, you, 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 may, you may be seated. The Lord Jesus. Uh, He's here and wants to rapture you right over into the realms of glory. Somebody said there's not going to be a rapture. I experience the rapture all the time. He said there's not going to be a catching away. I experience a catching away continually. John was caught away in the spirit on the Lord's day. I practice that on a, on a continual basis, getting caught away on the Lord's day. There is a day, and now it is here, where there just won't be one or two people that are anointed of the Holy Ghost. But all men and all women who are called by the name of the Lord will walk around in a divine anointing where you'll have this glory realm. You know, it seems like there's so many folks are just lined up for one or two people that have been functioning in the gifts of healing, working of miracles, have an authority to communicate the presence of Jesus, the manifest presence of the living God. And then that's been it. I mean, they just go stand in line to get touched. 
Huh? That's about the only time they get to be overwhelmed with the glory of heaven. Father, Father isn't wanting things that way, like that personal relationship with you, like you, like you to experience oneness with them all the time, like you understand what it means to live over here in this glory divine all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I have often wondered what, how would I look and what would I do if I couldn't, if I couldn't carry a tune? If I couldn't carry a tune, I would still be able to engage God because I would be the best dancer in the place. Well, what if I had no rhythm and could not dance? Uh, uh, I'd be the best shouter in the place in that clapper of my hands. Hallelujah. Hey, if I had no hands, no feet, I'd move my legs and arms. They would be, they would be flying around continually. Ah, yes, so I'd worship Father. I'd give Him praise and thanksgiving with whatever I had. There is no excuse for me to be aloof and disconnected, not engaging God. All it shows is the great disconnect between them and their God. That's all. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll recognize what that is, a great disconnect between you and God, and you'll get that disconnect fixed tonight. Hallelujah. And begin to walk with them, begin to serve them. Begin to take your place among all those who have received an inheritance. Father, I thank you for the anointing that breaks off the yoke, that blinds the hearts and minds of men. Lord, that everyone would be able to see through the spirit of wisdom and revelation the beauty of who you are. Oh, I tell you, then you'll, be going to, then you'll, begin, to, then, then you'll begin to praise like never before. Hallelujah. Uh, then, 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 then you begin to shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, so long as you're in prison and confined to, to the things that are going on in this life, and that's where you get your gain, that's where you get your satisfaction and your, and your worth, the things in heaven will be strange to you. The things of God will be foreign to you. Oh, you may understand them, maybe a little bit in the realm of mental affirmation, uh -huh. but the wellspring will not be loud. It will not have place, as it were to be able to function within your life. <laughs> Father's not intended that for anyone and has made a way of escape for everyone so that there's not a single person here in this place that should not be able to be overwhelmed with that which only can be found in the presence of the Lord. Pleasures evermore. Fullness of joy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, living God. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Ah, oh, Father, I thank you that your house is a house of prayer and a house of praise. Father, I thank you, God, right now in Jesus' name. There's not a single person in here that wouldn't be willing to allow you to show them what that means. Oh, God, that the great shout of heaven might begin to come forth through the souls and through the hearts of men. Too much entertainment, too much merchandise has spoiled the people of God and kept that which is real and, and true from being alive. What do you think people did before they had a CD player? <laughs> so if I said, well, they had a cassette player. <laughs> what they do for that? It's on my eight track. <laughs> what they do before they had the eight track? Well, records. What did they have that before the records? Radio. What they have to do? What did they have before radio? What did they have before radio? Huh? Well, if I figured then at that moment in time, you would have to have been able to have your own worship service. 
you would have had to, you'd have been, you'd have had to have been able to have your own connection with the glory divine. That's something. That is something that, if you don't have, you wanna you wanna receive tonight. You want these things to begin. To work in you right now. Hallelujah. I am a fire that burns. Huh? That's what the Lord is, you see. I, I am a fire that burns and makes restless those who do not understand me, says God. Hallelujah. Ah, but you might, things might wiggle around inside for a little while. Just hang with me. They'll be gone forever if you're willing. Hallelujah. They'll be gone forever. The fire of God that burns will absolutely take control of everything about your life. Hallelujah. And, and, and bring it into his purpose and his divine order. Tonight, it's uh, really important for me to grab a hold of you and minister to you about some things that God is holding his church responsible for. And I hope that uh, most everybody in here, and probably if I look around at just about everyone, there's, uh, there's a couple that, you know, you may not have made up your mind yet. But you're in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe that you're in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, would you just raise your hand? You believe you're part of the church? You're a member in particular in the body of Christ. God, the Holy Spirit, placed you there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. There, there, Papa has a responsibility that he's placed with on our sh upon our shoulders. And we want you to be able to grab a hold of these things right now. Thank you, Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. Now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for grabbing a hold of every heart right here. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that the anointing is greater than anything that would try to run interference with your presence. Father, I thank you that your anointing is greater than every kind of hindrance that would, would try to work. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love standing back, watch the Lord sort it all out. I, sometimes I, just, I enjoy just watching the wind divide everything. Wheat over here, chaff over here, the sheep over here, goats over there. Papa separated all out. Right now, Lange Galange, Sheikh of Rata, Vikalai. Divides the light from the darkness, good from the evil, truth from the lie. Hallelujah. Ha. Blessed is the name of the Lord. And we, we pray tonight before this meeting is over, everybody a step over under the good side. Everybody step over into the truth. Everybody step over into the light. Everybody step over into the right thinking, the right living. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the holy name of the living God. Father, I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the fire of your presence. I thank you for the working power of your anointing. Father, I thank you that you, the one who breaks off every yoke, you remove away all of those things that have hindered your people from taking a hold of you and knowing you and walking with you. Father, I thank you that you open up the, the deaf ears so the deaf ears can hear your word. I thank you, Father God, that you open up the blind eyes, that the blind eyes might see your glory. Father, I thank you that you cause the heart to understand that every person here in this place would be able to receive those things which you've so freely given. Thank you, Father, for the supply of the Spirit. Oh, bosebrekito namate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name. Say, blessed is the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, I give thanks unto you. <laughs> oh, Lord, I worship you. <laughs> Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, living God. I bless you, Lord. With all my heart. 
I praise you, Lord. With all my being, with all my being, I worship you. I worship you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. I praise your name. Glory and honor, power and dominion, power and dominion, glory and honor, praise your name, Lord, glory and honor. Power and dominion. Power and dominion. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Jesus. I praise your Holy Spirit. I praise your Holy Spirit. Lord, I yield to you. Lord, I yield to you. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Father. I praise you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Holy Spirit. I praise you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I yield to you. Lord, I yield to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, just lift your hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands to heaven. Just hum a song to him. Kabra ma 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 ne ma ne ne me la manda ibre bu malando ki di shara mamreve. Yeah. Yeah. Sika rava baba renanda la 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 mamre mama leo. Sira va ki ala vi breve no mando la bala le prevene. Sika rama mande breve ne mala la nda la la ba breve la. Sira bamba manande ro mando ro mamembele mini. Yeah, baby. Yeah, that's good. 
That's good. Yeah, that's that's it. Just keep praising him. Just praise him. Just praise him. Just praise the Lord. Just praise him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just praise Him. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 Father, we thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the fire of your presence. Thank you for the glory of your realms of heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. Woohoo! <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! Kriari be brema bolo bo. Woo! Hallelujah! 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 <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. 
In his presence, there is fullness of joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, I will. Lord, I will praise you. I will praise the Lamb for sinners slain. I will give you glory among the nations. For your blood has washed away every sin. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we're here to tell you tonight about a glory that you can live in all the time. A, 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 a joy unspeakable. Hallelujah. A place that's so divine. Hallelujah. A realm of heaven. Say heavenly. A realm of glory. Say glorious. See, people don't even know what joy is about until they step into the presence of the Lord for there in His presence is the only place that it's defined. Joy is a part of life. The world can't have any. They just have the pretend kind. They got the, the one that looks, look, looks like joy, looks like gold, but just a flash in the pan. It was fake all the time. Hallelujah. This is true. And so the Lord just says, come on over here. I write these things unto you. I announce these words unto you that your joy may be full. And it's joy unspeakable. Oh, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ha <laughs> ha. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. Hallelujah. In what you uh, let me be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. There's no one like you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what? Sweet, sweet 
shall in your ear. I want to be forever a sweet, sweet sound. Hallelujah. Yeah. Once having been delivered from the realms of the demonic, once having been delivered from the realms of oppression, once having been delivered from the prison of fear, oh, you're going to have a real good life. <laughs> Just watch and see. Because I got the blood of Jesus with me tonight. I'm not leaving nobody in no prisons. I'm not leaving nobody in no prison. Ah, here to set the captive free. Here to open up the prison door. Here to, pro here to proclaim liberty. Ah. Hey, open up your eyes, brother. Open up and lift up your head. Don't let no cloud hover over you. Ah. God's got good and great things for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's nothing down there. It's all up here. Oh, say, Lord, be my glory and the lifter of my head. Oh, be the glory and the lifter of my head. Be my glory and the lifter of my head. Lord, you my glory and the lifter of my head. <laughs> I have discovered that where there is perfect obedience, there is perfect peace. I have discovered where people, when they turn their hearts completely over to Jesus, and you can tell, you know, we've, we've discovered over and again that people are submitted to you so long as they're 100% in agreement with you. As soon as you know something that's contrary to what they know, all of a sudden, there's something happened to your salvation. Something happened to your walk with God. <laughs> Well, reality of it is nothing happened to salvation, nothing happened to walk with God, and just now it's the contest of your will versus the will of the Father. So I said, well, how can you know that you have the perfect will and mind of Christ? Well, I'm the representative of the Lord, so he'll give us the ability. Amen. Huh? How do you know I don't? That's the bigger question. Hallelujah. Because you got, you, 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 the, the burden of proof is on your shoulders, not on mine. Because Papa stands with me already. He's already defined that. Do you understand that? And I, ha I discovered that people just come into the place in God and walk with the Lord and be willing to be led by the Spirit, be led by the ministry, these places in the church. They just blossom. And they just prosper. and They just have every good thing that's going on in His Word. And that's what, that's what we want for all of you. We want you to be blessed. We want you to prosper. We want you to enjoy all the goodness of this fellowship divine with Father. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, some Pharisees came to Jesus, and they were some lawyers of the law, or some experts in the law of Moses. Different kinds of lawyers then than they are than, than today. The experts in what God said by Moses. And they come trying to trip Jesus up. They had all kinds of ideas, things they wanted to talk about. And, you know, Jesus decided, I'm going to ask you a question. And he said, well, David said to his Lord, sit, that the Lord said to my Lord, sit there here on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So I want you to, I want you to go and look at this verse of Scripture with me. In Matthew chapter 22, and verse, and I'm going to just say, start at verse 43. And Jesus starts in verse 42. He says, what do you think, who do you think Christ is? Whose son is he? 
They said unto him, well, he's the son of David. Then Jesus said, how then does David say in the spirit or by the spirit, how did David call him Lord? Saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit here on my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. If David didn't call him Lord, how can he be his son? Nobody said anything after that. He stopped every mouth and every thought and every idea because he went to the heart first and foremost of the problem and of their doctrinal error. And then he began to talk about the authority that he has. Because understanding that Christ Jesus, he is King of kings and he is Lord of lords. He is already, I mean, you know, there are Satanists and there are all kinds of people involved in various forms of the occult. And it's rising more and more every day and it's popular and everybody's fascinated by Harry Potter and everything else that's coming down the pike and there's more anti-God stuff than ever before. That doesn't change anything. Christ Jesus is seated upon the throne of heaven. He's King of kings. He's Lord of lords. He has absolute reign and sovereignty. And although He right now has given everybody the absolute freedom to choose what they want, He is, he is, ab, he is absolutely ruling. And I want to talk to you about this reign of Christ Jesus because He is far more than the Son of David. He is the son of David only by virtue of the fact that he was born of a woman. God the Holy Ghost overshadowed a woman named Mary, a young virtuous woman who is a descendant of David through his son Nathan, not Solomon. And the holy thing that was conceived on the inside of her, born of the Holy Ghost, was the Word of God, the Word, eternal Word, incarnated, became flesh, and He is, was, and is, and now for shall, for shall, shall forever be the only begotten Son of God. The eternal Word is His name. And so, He was only, he was only the Son of David because He was housed for about nine months in the womb of Mary. <laughs> Huh. And she really didn't, didn't have much else to do with it. Huh? You understand that? I have cows. Can I, can I, will you just bear with me for a minute? I have cows. We call them host cows. We get them all set up and we put an embryo inside of them that has absolutely no genetic relationship whatsoever. They just a house. And when my calves are born, they 100% full blood wagyu or black Japanese cows they have nothing to do with that cow they came out of no genetic relationship whatsoever God took, a, took the eternal word and made him a holy embryo and stuck him inside of one of the descendants of David's womb that's it that's it hallelujah and he walked among us we beheld his glory as the, as the glory of the only begotten Son of God. Full of everything that is God. 100% flesh because he took upon himself the robes of sinful flesh. Never did he one time sin, but he took upon himself the robes of sinful flesh that he might become a sacrifice for sin. The offering that Abel's offering first spoke up, but now the offering supreme. One offering that settles everything forever. And without him, you lost in your sins. A prisoner of a satanic realm. And one moment after you die, you'll see the prison gates of hell. And you'll be, you'll be ushered, drugged by the hair of your head into a place for which you shall never return. Because all sin and iniquity belongs to a realm of darkness and that judgment has already fell upon that realm. They are the place of the eternal damned. They have no place. There's no room for them in the life of God. There's no room for them in the realms of His eternal creation. For a period of time, a space of time in His mercy, 
he has delayed, as it were, the final judgment. But one day soon, the judgment will be done. As for you and for me, we have a short time of sojourn upon this life and we have some decisions to make and oh God has done great things and he was just now moving here by his spirit in such a glorious and wonderful way I saw a few of you understand what was actually taking place but God doesn't isn't going to be willing to let it to be uh, for just a few he's going to bring the many in and everybody is going to experience this great outpouring of his presence of his glory everybody is going to find themselves a place in the ranks of his mighty army anointed with his divine power and authority oh uh, what a what a grace Say, oh, what a grace. Oh, what a grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Acts chapter 3, uh, hallelujah. Verse 24, I believe it is. I'm going to try to turn there. It's going to be difficult for me. <laughs> this is when electronics is good that I can't find the numbers on the thing, you know. <laughs> kind of it's just over in another realm it's another place this isn't the thinking realm this is the flowing realm <laughs> and well you know it's just good to live here hallelujah I'm not subject to the things of this world I'm not subject to the elements of this world I'm not subject to the prince of the power of the year I'm subject to Christ Jesus alone I live under his realm of divine power and authority living in the cloud of his divine glory. And we're inviting everyone to come. And Father's made room for everyone. And it doesn't matter how much you blow it or how much you fail. God's made room for everyone. And I'll tell you, by this help and grace, Lord, I'm going to be a watchman over your soul and run every demon spirit, every wolf off I can find and you know, come on everything that messes with you. I mean, in Jesus' name. We're not going to allow you to be beat up, run off, scared. Huh? In Jesus' name, we're going to see you step up. But you have to follow us because, listen, listen to me. If you despise the anointing or if you anyway find, if you anyway find fault with the anointing, if you anyway allow Satan to criticize that one who's speaking to you, you completely are isolated from the anointing and the presence of God. You cut off from it. Because that's the way he does things. And that's why Satan, that's why Satan is such an accuser of the leaders of the church. Because he knows he can isolate you and cut you off from the flow of heaven. Just get over there in that critical realm, start listening to people tell you this stuff. Who them, and you know, my goodness, if people would just start listening to folks that they don't want to be like, you know, we'd have a... We'd, <laughs> Everybody get a long way down the road. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people. They, have, I mean, you wouldn't want to be like them for nothing. Yet people listen to what they got to say. My goodness, listen, listen to somebody who's got something to say. You want to be like them, because if you listen to what they have to say, you don't want to be like them. Watch out. You go. You would end up right in the same spot they're in if you're going to hearken to their counsel, because it's their counsel got them where they at. <laughs> we pray God give you wisdom in Jesus' name. Now, Jesus went up into heaven. And does anybody know where heaven's at? Anybody even know where heaven's at? About cloud level. That's where he disappeared. That's where he disappeared out of the sight. About cloud level. Also, I said, we got a telescope out. We couldn't see it. Well, you can't see everything with a telescope. In fact, if it is, you can't see everything with your naked eye right now that we can prove is all right here in the atmosphere and existing right now. But... Just because you can't see it don't mean it's not there. It's there. And one day, the heavens will be rolled back like a scroll. In other words, it's another dimension. It's another realm. It'll be rolled back like a scroll. And you read about Revelation chapter 6. And men will look up from the earth, right where we're standing here. And instead of seeing the sun up there and the moon up there and the stars up there, they'll see God on the throne. Jesus sitting at his right hand. Pretty radical, eh? Well, the scripture says, so really, the heaven is an unseen realm. The heavens is an unseen realm. The heavens is a place of authority. And when we talk about spiritual wickedness in a heavenly realm, huh? We're not talking about when we talk about Satan being 
in a heavenly realm. We're not talking about him being the realm Christ Jesus in. No, we're talking about, we're talking about him being an unseen realm. Huh? And from that un un unseen realm, being able to infect and affect people's thoughts, opinions, minds, actions, deeds. Well, the Lord has given us authority over that realm of the demonic. That spiritual wickedness that's in, a high, that's in high places. One day, Scripture says, Satan will be cast down out of heaven to the earth. He becomes physical. He be, in other words, he become visible to the naked eye. Um, at that time, all the nations of the earth will actually have for their government a cult worship of Satan. All the nations, every nation will come under the influence of a satanic worship to the point, listen, that he will lead the armies of men into a place called Armageddon, the Valley of Megiddo, and they will knowingly go to fight against God because they will have all been convinced that God is unjust, that he's making us do whatever he says to do, and we don't have to be that and do that, and all this other nonsense and lies. They come up to fight against God, but they will win. Because they've already lost. You can't win when you've already lost. But you can't convince Satan of that. He's a liar. He's deceived. He's, he, everything he does is a lie. Everything about his realm is a deception. He, doesn't, he does not believe that he's defeated. He doesn't believe it. But nonetheless, Papa's given us all power and authority over demon spirits, all power and authority over all the works of darkness. Satan is crushed under my feet. I mean, I love it how Paul said to the Romans, says, God, just stand fast. It's not going to be long, and the Lord will crush Satan under your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> this is the inheritance of the saints. Well, here we look over in Acts chapter 3 and verse 24. I want you to, I'm, I'm, I'm building to something now, people, because we're going to put some heavy responsibility on you here in just a few minutes. Um, Acts chapter 3. Let me see, where do I want to be? Um, it's verse 21, not 24. And, and I'm going to back up to verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Hallelujah. And, and I'd like to stop there. Just mind everybody there because repentance really, repentance in the New Testament is very different than any other definition of repentance because this is the repentance that comes by a complete transformation of nature where you are born again by the power of the Holy Ghost where Christ is formed on your insides. Hallelujah. He comes, lives, and abides and dwells in you. How it takes over every part of your emotions, passions, appetites, and attitudes. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a wonderful realm. Now, he said, well, I, that is my experience with this growing grace. I mean, if you desire the sincere milk of the word as a newborn babe and watch what God will do for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll teach you everything that he, that he himself is doing. And whoa, he does everything perfectly. He's that wonderful. Everything about his love is wonderful. Everything about his goodness is wonderful. But, Jesus, but Peter says, Be repent and therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out and the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And there, I mean, I'm living in times of refreshing. I live in times that are refreshing every day, being filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. my soul and my spirit. I just overwhelmed by His presence, living in the manifest presence of the Lord. But there's something even better coming. This is just the down payment. This is just the earnest money. This is just the 1% financing of all that God has given to us. I mean, you could easily understand it if you try to turn around and think, well, we, got, we gave God a down payment to have our place reserved for us, but he doesn't say it that way. He said, I've given a down payment to, to you, for you, earnest money, the seal of the Spirit, to prove to you that you're my purchased possession, that you belong to me, the seal of the Holy Ghost. I, I walk around and we see in this life people who have the seal of the demonic. See it on their face. See the activity of it in their life. Uh, seal of the demonic. Well, I'm here to serve notice to the seal of the demonic. I'm taking this seal away. <laughs> I'm breaking off his stronghold. I'm breaking off his yoke. You know, here's what I know. Nobody can come to any meeting that I preach in and ever be the same. It, it, for good or for bad. If they, stay, if they stay in the world of sin, they've got to be tormented like never before. 
until they surrender their life to Jesus? Huh? And we pray it's for the good. Because if they call upon the name of the Lord, everything's going to be wonderful. Everything will be new. Isn't that great that everything can become new? Behold, all things are new and all things are of God. Isn't that great? Yeah. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and behold, everything is new. I'm living in the everything is new. I'm living in the discovery of the everything is new. I'm living in the discovery and on the grand adventure of everything is of God. And oh, what a wonderful thing it is to be a people of God, for God to be my God and, me, and I get to be one of his people. And I'm just having to be a very special people of his uh, because I'm the apple of his eye. I'm his favorite person. Hallelujah. And guess what? You get to be that too. Should you want to have that classification? Should you be willing to believe? God has made everybody super special that wants to be that way with him. Hallelujah. He's no respecter of person, persons. He has no partiality. It just be willing to believe him. Be willing to trust him. <laughs> be willing to obey him. He's worthy to be obeyed. I hear people say he's worthy to be praised. That is true. But I tell you, he's worthy to be obeyed too because everything he asks us is for our own good. It's for our own blessing. It's for, it's for that which, will, which will, will bring all the good things of God into our life. He's worthy to be obeyed. Where is Papa's honor? Where is, where is Papa's honor? It's going to be in my life. It's been established by the Holy Spirit. Where is the honor to our elder brother, Christ Jesus? What a blessing to be able to call him the elder brother. Well, Peter said that Jesus had to go into heaven. He said he must go into heaven and be received into heaven until the time of restoration of all things. Now, we can read in Hebrews in chapter 1, we can read also in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 13, that after that he purged our sins, Father said, sit here on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Now, I know what happened when Jesus ascended up on high. I know what happened when he was, when he was exalted to the right hand of the Father. You know what took place? He poured out the Holy Ghost. That is the singular event of what took place to prove that Jesus sat down at the majesty, at the right hand of the majesty on high, whose name was then exalted above all things. Jesus said, if you come and ask me to drink, I'll give you the drink. I'll give you the living water. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of, of living water. This spake ye of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given, for he was not yet glorified. But there, after that, the Holy Ghost was poured out upon the church on the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up and said, Jesus now being glorified, exalted to the right hand of the Father, has poured forth that which you see and hear. It is the testimony that he is now walking in his divine glory, exalted above every name that is named, given authority over everything whom the heavens must receive until the restora restoration of all things. Now, let's think about Father at work right now making every one of his enemies his footstool. Let's think about this. Every day, men are making a choice of whether or not they are willing to get right with God. Every day, men are making a choice, their hearts being evaluated and examined, examined by the living God as to whether or not they want to learn the righteousness of God, the ways of God's life, or whether they want to continue on in their own way. They're making the choices every day. And by that choice, a separation is taking place. And God's enemies are being identified and being moved out of the way. It's true. 
He's given to his church power and authority over all the powers of darkness. He's given to his church power and authority to cast out devils. He's given to his church the ability to turn men from the power of Satan and the power of God. Paul said that we could have that as an individual. He, he, in the context of that ministry, he wasn't talking about the church, but his individual ministry. And we know that God's no respecter of person. What he's given to one, he'll give to another also. Jesus said, these works which I do shall you do in greater works than these. And Paul said, I've been given the authority. I've not been, I've not been unfaithful to the heavenly vision. I was given an authority to turn men from the power of Satan, the power of God, from darkness unto light to open up the eyes of the blind it's the same way as jesus saying the spirit of the lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor to proclaim liberty to the bind up the broken in heart to proclaim liberty to the captive the over, open up the prison doors to them that are bound to, to, to declare the acceptable day of the lord this is the acceptable day of the lord where god is saying peace to those who are near and peace to those who are far away as he said by this prophet Isaiah, I see his sickness, I see his disease, I see his rebellion, but I will heal him and I will say unto him, peace to those who are near and peace to those who are far away. He's amazing God. He's come and healed our disease of sin and iniquity by the precious blood that poured out from his veins in his life at Calvary. And I'm so excited. I sing the song of the redeemed right now. I'm not waiting till later. My goodness, I think if people are going to wait till later, they're not going to be later because you, it's something that happens now. It's a revelation that God brings now. Religion would try to veil it. The powers of religion and darkness would try to block it out. But once you see this wonderful redemption in Christ Jesus, you're going to shout. And then you're not going to stop shouting because it's such a wonderful thing that God has done for us and with every shout God causes us to see that much more clear so a greater inspiration comes hallelujah the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him that causes our eyes to be open so that we can see exactly who God has made us in Christ Jesus I want you to look at a scary verse of scripture. Second Thessalonians in chapter two, verse seven. And you know, I like to point out to people where we're at. I know where we're going. I have a sure word of prophecy that tells me exactly where we're going, exactly where the world is going, where it's going to end. And it's nice to know where we're at in that timeline. Uh, we, I, we know that we are on that, we are in perilous times like never before. We see the apostasy rising in the midst of the church like never before. We see the inklings, the first rumblings, as it were, of the falling away. But I want you to understand something here tonight about the purpose and the position of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, Jesus was manifested to destroy the devil. Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. That's what John said, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. And he's given to us, his church, that authority and that divine ability to continue on his ministry, not another ministry. That's why he said, these works which I do shall you do also. That sounds like the same ministry, doesn't it? He said, I'm going to give you the same Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you the same glory. He says, Father, I gave them the glory that you gave to me so that they can function just like we function. That's what he said. So they could be one just like we're one. John chapter 17, verse 21 through 23. He's given us his same ministry. Go destroy the works of the devil. Everywhere is he, Jesus? saw the works of the devil he destroyed me he said leave go now and in a matter of it was a spiritual realm of demonic powers of oppression a spiritual realm of demonic lies and oppression or, or it was a physical realm of sickness and disease Jesus run off the devil amen set people free praise God hallelujah showing his absolute sovereign and authority showing who he was Praise God. And now gave to us the same ability that we might be 
witnesses of who he is. Hallelujah. He's the same Jesus. He may have been received up into heaven, but he's with me right now. Everywhere I go, he goes with me, confirming his word with signs following. He says, lo, I'm with you uh, always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. With the church. Yes. With his church. Uh, the gates of hell can The gates of hell, that means all of the, the fortified armies of hell cannot prevail or cannot win against the church and there's certainly the powers of darkness all hell is fighting against the church but the but the hell can't win if there were two or three of us left standing hell all hell couldn't win all hell could not win against two three hallelujah that's all he needs to have a bona fide qualified church in the earth two or three praise god there's more than that and papa's got a book he's got a book he's got a book when Elijah the prophet, who could see and know and understand most everything, tried to get into a place of a state of mind and thinking that he was the only one left, God said, now I got 7,000 hadn't bowed their knee to that thing yet. I got 7,000. He was counting everyone. He was observing everyone's response to his call. And so he is now. The book of Remembrance is written. Papa knows what's going on. He sees you here tonight. He sees the people that have gathered in the churches all over the world today on this day that we, represent, that we worship the Lord. We worship the Lord on Sunday. Somebody said, why do we worship the Lord on Sunday? It's because we celebrate the resurrection. We don't celebrate the resurrection once a year. We celebrate the resurrection once a week. Huh? And I celebrate the resurrection every day because I'm living in the resurrection. I love the resurrection. There's one big gigantic party that I do not want to stop participating with. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, and he just gets better every day. And it is wonderful to, to, I mean, it's the great escape. I have escaped. I have escaped. Jesus has uh, delivered me. I have escaped this world. I've escaped the wrath that is upon this world. I'm now seated together with him in a heavenly realm, and it's a, bla and it's a blessed place to be. Hallelujah. I, I told my wife the other day, I said, sweetheart, I am so glad that you only have one personality. I'm so glad that you, I'm not having to deal with two people. One day you're happy, one day you're sad, one minute you're happy, the other minute we don't know what's going on. Too many people live that way. Huh? Multiple personalities are going on more than have been identified. Oh, it's wonderful when Jesus Christ steps inside and we live every day filled with his joy, happy all the time because we're drinking this wonderful heavenly new wine, being filled with the Spirit, drinking from this water, this water from the rock, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. All I have to do is speak and ask. No special miracle has to take place. It has been flowing out. Father has put these things, hallelujah, into place for anybody whosoever wills. You seek the Lord and you'll find them. Some people think that's a single event. No. As soon as you get yourself in trouble, it seems like God's far away. Seek the Lord. His manifest presence will appear. And he'll be found of you. Right there, you'll see that he's a very present, ever present God. Walking with us, leading us, living in us. Ooh, all of his delights are with me. And anyone else who wants to be in the family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Papa, Papa loves us so much. He puts up with a lot of nonsense, a lot of ridiculous nonsense, a lot of stubbornness, a lot of trying to do it on our own, a lot of self-will. And he pleads with us and he's long-suffering and he's patient and he's merciful and he's full of goodness and full of truth. One fruit of the Spirit is goodness. He mentioned living all day long in goodness. Who is good? <laughs> His goodness. Well, God said to Moses, I cause my goodness to pass before you. And as soon as the goodness of God passed before Moses, boom, his cells in his, his, in his skin begin lit up and glowed for the rest of his life. I, he didn't have no skin problems, I guarantee you. <laughs> I guarantee you no cancer could get in his skin. Hallelujah. No melanoma can come into his skin. Hallelujah. Father has a lot for us. All we got to do is be willing to know our God. Those who know their God will do great exploits in this last day of great 
of this great outpouring, this great moving of God's Spirit and power. One day, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, He said, you want to know when I'm going to return? I didn't say nothing. I was shocked. I know the voice. Then the Spirit of the Lord said again, do you want to know when I'm going to return? I said, no. No man knows. The Father alone. Then the Spirit of the Lord said, do you want to know when I'm going to return? And I knew who was speaking. So I timidly said, yes, 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 I do. He said, when there's no more harvest, when there's no more harvest, understand, that is a perilous situation. God is going to, to work a work in these last days. Joel testified concerning this great army. It's taken part in every generation, but it's going to be even greater in these last days. I'm telling you, there'll be a fire that goes before us, and though it be as a garden of Eden, we will consume and lick up everything with the fire of God. There won't even be a gleaning. Hallelujah. Behind us, it will be as a desolate wilderness representing the great harvest that will come in. Every soul of man will be touched by the presence of the living God. This is His mercy. I'm positioning myself because I believe that I live in the final days. I believe that I live in the day that Paul thought he most certainly was in. I believe that I live in the final hours of the church. I believe that we find ourselves right now with the greatest possibility of divine glory being revealed through our lives. Those who know God know their God will do great exploits in these last days and Satan has never fought the church harder. He's been never been so effective against the church as he is now. But I'm going to tell you right now, there is a glorious fire of God proceeding forth from our lives. This word of God is a fire that burns. Somebody said, Enoch and Elijah will come and prophesy and fire Fire will go out of their mouth and slay the enemies of God. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, fire is going out of the mouth of those who have the spirit of the living God as the word of God is proclaimed through their lips. And every power of hell and every enemy of God that in the demonic realm, his power is broken. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In 2 Thessalonians, in chapter 2, in verse 7, I believe it's verse 7, could be verse 6. We'll get over there. We'll discover it quickly. Verse 7. He says, For hold, behold, the mystery of iniquity is already at work. The mystery of iniquity in this context is talking about uh, the ultimate unveiling of this satanic worship that all of the world is right now moving towards. And Hollywood and what's happening now and what's been set up through the course of time to where the television sets set in every person's house, even in the most foreign outreaches of Mongolia and, 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 and Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I was in the backwoods of a crazy, desolate wilderness place in the Middle East and couldn't believe it, man. Everybody's got a TV. And what were they watching? MTV broadcasted right out of L.A. Right out of L.A. <laughs> he listened to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, fathers allowed it. Fathers allowed it. The world is being moved by the powers of darkness. But the world is being moved to find the place that they're going to fall out to. But I'm going to tell you, a greater power than the satanic power is, is, at, uh, is on the move right now, bringing and drawing everybody who wants to come stand on God's side, calling everyone who wants to come over here and be a part of that which belongs to heaven. Come stand over here. Come stand over here. Come stand over here. It's like Moses calling out to Israel said, everybody who's on the Lord's side, come stand with me. That's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, everyone who's on the Lord's side, come stand with me. The Holy Spirit is drawing and God is calling and the mercy of, and the grace of God is leading men. And every day you're making a decision. 
Well, the mystery of iniquity is always already works. But right now, the one that is withholding will continue to withhold until he is taken out of the way. Right now, the church withholds the mystery of iniquity from being revealed. The church is the power that stands against Satan being able to run across this earth and do whatever it is he wants to do. We are the authority of Jesus Christ right now. He is reigning and he's going to reign until all of his enemies are made his footstool. He's going to be received into heaven until the restoration of all things. And when he comes, he, was, when he, comes, he will come with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up into the air to meet with him and we shall forever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And then he will come after the great banqueting feast and marriage supper after about a period of time of about seven years when Father is finished dealing with his nation of Israel. Somebody said, oh, there's not going to be any catching away. There's not going to be any rapture. I guarantee you there is. I have many infallible proofs of it. And if, if, if it wasn't, I could tell you the day and the hour of his coming. Why? Because as soon as... The powers of darkness work, the abomination that makes desolate in the holies of holies that will be erected in Israel, in Jerusalem. I can count the number of days until Christ Jesus comes down out of heaven. Huh? I tell you what, no man knows the day or the hour of, and that's the appearing of the Lord Jesus when he will come and descend with the voice of an archangel and the sound of a trumpet, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. When people start messing with the catching away, I'm going to tell you why you should fear. You're messing with the resurrection of the saints. You better watch out. It's just not a little a peripheral doctrine, little event that you can basically play dice with. <laughs> God's word belongs to those who know it. And God's word are th belongs to those who seek after him and give themselves diligently to the things that belong to his word. <laughs> We're not playing no guessing game. God's not left it to a guessing game. I'm going to tell you right now, there are things that are even less revealed uh, than those things concerning the catching away of the church. And yet they have become established cardinal doctrines in the church. Satan's fighting against that which the Holy Ghost is doing and the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ he wants to hide and eclipse in whatever way he can do it. He's going to work his craft. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, my eyes are set upon the skies. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the return of my master. Amen. I'm looking for the day of his appearing. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not letting anybody take this hope away from me. No, sir. I, I'm, Jesus gave it to me and you can't have it. Or you can have it. But you can't take away the hope that he gave to me. You can have the hope too. Let me tell you about the power and the authority of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't have to go back into the ancient antiquity. I can go back just oh, really 75 years ago, 80 years ago. Hollywood could not make a movie unless it asked the church if it was okay. The church had authority. To say immorality cannot exist. That's the way it's supposed to be. Crush the head of Satan. Crush the head of immorality. Break off the yoke and not the shackle. Now, truly Pandora's box has, box has been opened. And now people are so filled with their iniquity. And now that, that ultimately anything goes. And now the morality of man continually to, continues to erode at an exponential rate. That before it would, have been, it would have been impossible for the most part for such iniquity and such ungodliness to breed so quickly. All men are hearing the same voice. They're united just like in the days of Nimrod when all the people were gathered together. And the Lord said, no, you must separate, you must divide. And they were unwilling because Satan wanted to bring all the world together so he could work his craft among them. That was the pride of Alexander the Great. You want to make the world one. To hear one voice. To do one thing. To be one people. To be one culture. Huh? And he served Satan. And they called, him at, they called Satan in that day Apollos and Zeus. They called. They had all these various names for these angels of darkness.
And somebody said, oh, just superstition. Yeah, well, you, they real. Angel, fallen angels are real. They're real. What happens when, what happens if you and I are the preserving salt of the earth? If we're the people that stand against immorality? If we're the only force that stands against Satan? What happens when we yield to Satan? And we give him place that he's able to do whatever it is he wants to do in our society. Get ready to read a verse of scripture to you in Romans 8, 16 so you can turn there. I have this dear friend. I met him in the early 90s. I first heard about him. Uh, in the, I first heard about him, I think, in the late 80s. And I became captivated by him. His name's Carlos Anacondia. And I read about how he was taking whole cities for God. How that he would go in with such authority over demon spirits that whole cities and regions would turn to God. I read about how Brazil was almost had become an entire Christian nation through his ministry. I read about Argentina. I read about other places that he had been. And so I had Sandy write him a letter. I said, you get a hold of this guy, I want to meet him. So she got a hold of what, Grandma? And then the Lord worked it out through the course of events. He worked it out for me to meet him. And one of the, one of the things he told me, and actually Sandy was translating for me when he told me this, he said, do you know why Spain hates America? Because Satan hates America. America is the last stronghold of morality and godliness in the earth. This is a man who knows about demon power. Look. He said, you know why France hates America? Didn't he? Went down the list. Because Satan hates America. You know why Germany? He goes through the list. Hates America? Goes through the list. But Satan hates America. And he set himself. Satan has set himself to bring America to the lowest state of immorality that is possible so that it will hinder him the more. The church has been strong in America. We've been strong. We've been the contenders for revival. We've been, as it were, the place where God has, has moved in such amazing ways over the past 200 years in connection with great revivalists that came over from England. Like, you know, men like John Wesley and, and, and George Whitfield, and of course, I mean, the great Wells revivals that took place every 30, 40 years. And of course, some of you know Rodney, his whole family's from Wells, basically. The great culture of revival there. America had great revival. The church was powerful. The church stood strong in the anointing and was a power that withheld every work that Satan wanted to try to work to take over this nation, to stop the authority that God had given to us as a nation that stood as a lighthouse of truth, a church that was so on fire that we shone as a light under the world, a city that could not be healed, but we're losing that because now, like never before, immorality has crept into the church. I want to show you something here in Romans chapter. I want to show you. Yeah, you know, let, let me just tell you this. Satan does everything he can do. He would do everything he could do to stop me from preaching this sermon. When I stepped down off the platform, I could feel, I could feel his rumblings. Huh? He fights against the church. There's a great anointing in this place, but he'll fight against the church. I can feel his rumblings, you know? Huh? Some people got up and left. Other people started twitching. Ah, oh, yeah. True. We see twitches all over the place. Huh? Huh? Because that day right now, everybody's got a hot seat. Some of you used to sitting in the fire and some of you aren't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? Reality of it is, Satan can't stop nothing. He can't stop nothing because the anointing and the influence of the Holy Ghost is far greater than any power that he has. And it's wonderful when God's people discover that. 
that, that Satan and the powers of darkness and demon spirits don't have to run you around from one place to one sin, one problem to the next, one circumstance to the next. Now, you don't have to live powerless and defeated that you can take a hold of this relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and begin to see divine power and authority in your life to do all these works that Jesus is, did and is doing. You know how he's reigning? Through his church. His church is his manifest person. The church is his manifest presence. Now look at this. Look at this. Listen to me. If a meeting isn't, isn't conducted the way that Jesus conducted his meetings, then it isn't his church. It isn't functioning as his church. The Holy Ghost isn't in charge because Jesus hasn't changed. He's still doing the same kind of meetings. He's still calling men to repentance. He's still, he's still unveiling what's really taking place in the world around you. He's still the cure for your financial problems, your physical problems, your mental problems. The, the moving of the Holy Spirit that brings peace and that brings calm and that brings joy and that brings love. That's the ministry of Jesus that cast out devils that won't allow uh, men to rule. That's the ministry of Jesus. That who, that's who we're supposed to be. But something's happening in this dynamic that's very important for us to acknowledge. In Romans chapter 8, verse 16, Paul points it out. Paul points this out. Jesus has given us the authority to be the sons of God. Jesus has given his church power and authority to stand against all the powers of darkness. But look at this in Romans chapter, Romans chapter 6. Forgive me. Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Look at this. Here's what the Lord says. Know you not that to whomever you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are, whether it is sin unto death or it's obedience unto righteousness. The reality of it is, is Satan is able to work his work because so many people who have been given the place in this generation to stand as the authority that in other generations people took up the mantle. In other generations, the church, the church was having prayer meetings. They were having prayer vigils all night. There was fasting and praying going on. There was consecration to holy living. There was a hunger and a thirst to do that which is right. There was a crying out for the lost. There was a making of intercession for the move of God. Now every man's turned to his own interest. And all sad or happy uh, uh, you know, based upon how, it's, how well it's going for them as an individual. And the heart's not turned towards the need of the people where God's heart is. Are you listening to me now? Now we find ourselves where there are people. Look, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, let me just say it this way. People allow in their living rooms and watch on their televisions right now what the ungodly would not participate with 60 years ago. And they call themselves Christians. Give me a break. Yeah, that's the Christian religion. Are you listening to me? Huh? Are you listening to me? You gotta understand something. Whatever, and then out of that, Satan is able to sow so many seeds to where the immorality, the ungodliness just continues, continues to rise. And with that, religion rises with it. Where people begin to give place. They don't know how to walk in love. And that's why they bicker and fight and fuss and have something bad to say about other people. That's why they're critical against the servants of the Lord and the anointing. Let me just say this. Let me say in every generation, God's raised up men of God to straighten out his house. John Wesley used to say this. He used to say things like this. When I come there, your church membership will be significantly reduced. Because he's going to, he's gone, moved by his fire to run off the things that won't change. He does. Because he wants to bring in a harvest. He's preparing his church to receive a harvest. And if wrong attitudes, if wrong dispositions, if wrong things are allowed to exist that are not in, in, in submission to Christ Jesus, then people are touched by the Holy Spirit 
touched by the Lord Jesus Christ out there in the world, they totally delivered from sin, come, and then they think that you're the one that they're supposed to model after, and then they have a wrong example. Father doesn't want to ruin the harvest. And so before every great revival, there is a wind that blows, a fire that burns. And then you can hear the uprising. You can hear the uprising. You can hear the sound. Oh, he ran me off. There's no love there. Oh, yeah, there's love here. We're preserving people and protecting them against you. Because you call yourself a Christian and you're just stubborn and rebellious and you will not change. And you continue to misbehave and speak evil and won't submit to your husband and go on through the list. Huh? Uh oh. <laughs> People, let me, let me say this. It's very important for you to recognize this. The grace of God abounds under many offenses. In other words, if you sin, it's not going to be just like Adam, where you lose completely out with God. There's the blood of Jesus Christ there to restore you if you confess your sins, if you allow godly sorrow to work in your heart. Huh? The Holy Ghost is going to be saying, I don't, I'll never do that again. Father, forgive me. There's going to be true brokenness. But when people take the position as though it's okay, it's common, we're going to do it more or less every day, God understands. You're not right with God. Your heart's not right. Because you regard iniquity. Regarding iniquity says, you know, I kind of like this. God understands. That's regarding iniquity. It's putting, giving iniquity or sin a place in your life because you like it. There's not a godly sorrow that says, I don't want that father in my life. Forgive me. I don't want to fail into that. Lord, I only want those things that you want from my life. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. I mean, it's just really taking the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses you and taking the power of the Holy Ghost that empowers you to do what's right. There's such mercy and grace there. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't run out. But that's not what's going on. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who come under the yoke and the authority of Satan. You're going to have to let the floodlight shine in your life, and you're going to have to recognize, is there any place that you've given the demon spirits? Is there any place that you've given to wrong attitudes? Is there any place that you've given to wrong behavioral patterns? Because what happens is this. People, people feel convicted. I, 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 I've dealt with a lot of people, even men of God who's done great things in the kingdom. And, that, and, you know, and everybody's the same. Were they done very little or were they done great things? Well, the first time they gave place to that sin, they knew it was strong conviction upon them. And the second time, and the third time. And then all of a sudden, they begin to be getting to a place of justifying it. Before long... Their hearts were hardened against the Holy Spirit and they were imprisoned by it. Listen to me. I know people personally right now who have done great things in the kingdom of God who are preaching right now and they're demon-possessed. Right now, demon-possessed. And I'm not exaggerating. I know this. And it is not a word of knowledge. I know them. So what happens when Satan is allowed in the ranks of the church? What happens when the powers of darkness are given place in your life? You know, as the church is the body of Christ, everybody is supposed to find their place flowing in the anointing. And as you do, you know, as, as you function in the giftings of the Holy Ghost, the church is built up. The church is allowed to be seen functioning in the glorious realm of all those things that have been supplied to us in Christ Jesus, whether it's the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, working of miracles, gifts of healing, all these beautiful things, prophecy, the song, the praise, hallelujah, all these wonderful things. Now, God placed in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, and tonight he's placed in the church here for you talking to you right now, a pastor to perfect you but you've got to listen you have to obey you can't continue to do the same thing if you continue to do the same wrong things all you're doing is hardening your heart and sealing your damnation that's all because the more you sow into it every day the greater the probability it's going to continue to repeat in your life and you're never going to get off that 
That's why God says, run to the mercy seat. Run, run, come, to, come now. Come to this place of deliverance. Come to this place of freedom. Whatever you got to do, get in over here and get liberated so nothing has mastery or control over you because the sin continues on in your life. You a slave of it. You hear me now? I'm not talking just about you tripped up one time and something, you know, or two times. And I'm, I'm talking about people who have continually going on in your life. You're a slave to sin. You're a slave to sin. And I, I, watch, I watch this. I watch this in big churches, little churches, medium-sized churches, churches with great anointing, churches with small anointings. I'll see people come. They'll stand in line. And yeah, I've got to touch them. They'll shake. My goodness. They'll roll. They'll rattle. They'll run. They'll scream. They'll shout. Because Papa's willing to touch everybody. That isn't a validation of you. That's a call. As the Lord say, taste and see. He's giving you a taste. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that then maybe you'd go ahead and turn, turn your life completely over to the Lord because there's a whole lot more than this. There's a whole lot more than that. Especially when this is that. Amen. Are you with me? Hallelujah. He's calling us to come. He says, this, isn't it good? Have you tasted and see that the Lord is good? Blessed is the man who puts their trust in him. Come live now. God says, Paul says, come live in my dwelling place. Come live up here. Hallelujah. <laughs> I watch as men and women in the churches of America, even, even here in this place, I watch you. I watch every one of you. Not one of you escape my view. Not one of you escape the view of the Holy Ghost. Not one of you escape God's view. Not one of you escape the view of the Lord Jesus. I can see how hard it is for many people to make a connection with God in the church in America. And then, they, then when they want to make a connection, they try to make a connection based on their own terms. Give me a break, people. Look, you just want to give your all to the Lord. You want to begin to, you want to, begin to praise Him, worship Him, love Him. Ha. <laughs> You don't need to worry. If you don't know the words of the song, just go. Ah, 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 ah. It'll fit in. Just be in, just find a harmony. No one to know the difference. Unless you got an extra loud voice, and then we hope that you use it properly. Be mindful. Somebody's you're screaming at somebody's ear. <laughs> But if it's from the heart, they'll be blessed. I'm loud. I'm loud. But when I go sit, when I go to other people's churches and I sit in church, I always have, I'm, I'm saying this with all sincerity, not in a self-serving way. I always be telling me, man, I'm so glad I sit by you. I'm loud, but I mean, it's Holy Ghost shout. And you get blessed by the Holy Ghost shout. Hallelujah. <laughs> You get bombed and it's not disturbing unless it's a tingling cymbal and sound of, you know, the sound of brass. And it's like, man, good as that. Sit by somebody with a tingling cymbal, sound of brass all night. You talk about aggravating. Huh? Because you're only full of the Holy Ghost in church, and they're not really full. Are you with me? You understand what I'm saying? You just got the stirrings of one who's still beckoning you to come. Oh. I want, I, want to, I want to participate in your perfection, but you've got to be willing to connect. Mm. Mm. Yeah. God loves you, but you're going to have to be willing to connect. We want, to, we want to perfect you so that you can do a work of the ministry. If you're perfected, in other words, if you're committed to what God is supplying, then you will do a work of the ministry. And he's talking about the context of how you function and flow in the anointing in the midst of the church. I mean, John, we miss you. I know that you just got in. We miss you. But, you know, not having you on the base, ultimately, it's, it's, it, there's something missing. Okay? There are musicians that were here last year that aren't here because of different things that are going on. And we miss them. There's something missing. You can really feel it and experience, especially in the music. But it's even greater, is even greater in its impact in the gifts of the Spirit. 
Because once you've been in the context of a church where people are flowing in the anointing, where Satan has no part in them, where they're not half the week taken out by sin, it's a big difference. It's a big difference when Satan comes and has nothing in you. The anointing is very different in your life. It's more like a fire that burns, huh? Than just a feeling. It's an authority that breaks off the yoke. It's authority that causes the light of his divine power and glory to be seen in San Diego and in the surf. Huh? There's a couple of people that I'm glad that you're around here because things would get a whole lot quieter if you weren't here. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? There would be a whole, it would be a whole lot more sedate if you weren't here. Uh, are you listening to me? Huh? You like a fire that burns and it spreads when you begin to worship God and praise God. Hallelujah. What if all of the church took their place and had that same kind of Holy Ghost flow? Somebody said, well, I wasn't born with the same vocal cords. Not about vocal cords. Not about vocal cords. Crows, kai, praising God. Ka, ka. You should hear me do my hawk and eagle in sounds. I won't do it to you. I won't do it. I'll be at the ranch this next week. I'll talk to them then. Doesn't matter what your voice sounds like. Lift up your voice. I, I listen to people get, they start off sounding terrible, but let, all of a sudden they begin to flow on the anointing. Suddenly they begin to hook up with that deeper realm. Huh? Hallelujah. It's best, it's best that you come to the meeting in the deeper realm. But this, that isn't the way things usually go down. People don't usually come to the meeting in the deeper realm because they've been living in the world. They've been living in the earth that chokes the fruit cares is life, deceitfulness and riches and pleasures of this world. God's calling out a church. God's calling out a church, people who live in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit, who live in heaven and walk in heaven. There's a great company of saints right now looking over the balcony of heaven right now. There's a great cloud of witnesses right now that, are, that, are, that testify of how men can walk with God both under the law and in the new covenant. And nobody going to stand up there and say, well, Lord, you understand the pressures that we were living under. You understand the so social system and the culture that we were in because everybody has had to deal with the same issues, with the same fiery trials, has had to suffer with the same tribulations. And they won the prize. They won the prize. They're standing there. They're not naked. they clothed upon with this glory right now, waiting for the resurrected body. They're not naked. God prepared a place for them, a tabernacle, so that they would be clothed. Paul talked about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 while they've been waiting for the resurrection. Mm, hallelujah. Enoch stands there right now in his physical body. Oh, he never died. He pleased God and he to see that Elijah's taken up standing there in his physical body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses led Israel in the bringing in of the law, but Elijah will live, lead Israel in the bringing of Israel into the new covenant. Oh yeah, that's why they stood at Mount, at the Mount with Jesus when he was transfigured before them, heard the Father speak from heaven, saw Moses and Elijah. Oh yeah, yeah, Elijah's coming back. He's coming back. The two witnesses that stand before the presence of the Lord are coming back. They're going to stand and hold back the armies of God. And for three years, they have prophesied. And then they're, then they're going to be killed. And their dead bodies will lay in the streets for three days. And everybody in the world will celebrate that the prophets of God are dead. They'll celebrate that the prophets of God are dead. But then shall the Lord come for ten thousands of his saints to execute his judgment, to take his power and reign. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There won't be the voice of the archangel, the sound of the trumpet at this time. Uh-uh. He will tread the grapes of wrath in his vengeance, for it will be the day of vengeance. 
He will come from Bozrah, which is nothing but a rock rubble right now. I'm getting ready to start teaching on the book of Revelation on Friday night. The Lord just dealt with me about it. Because there are so many rich things there that I don't hear anybody talking about. There's something I need to talk about. It, so I'll just start talking about it. Bozrah is a rock rubble, a pile of rubble and rock right now. But all the nations of the earth shall wonder at it. And the Lord has shown me why. Can you imagine Bozrah, southern Jordan? It's nothing but a desert. It used to be a fruitful plain. Something happened. Kind of like Gilboa. Gilboa used to be one of the most lush and beautiful mountains. But David cursed it. Because it drank the blood of the anointed of the Lord when Saul died upon its slopes. Yeah. True. True. Well, something's going to happen in southern Jordan. Because when Jesus comes, the first place he's going to go is Bozrah. Who is this who comes from Bozrah with his garments dipped in blood? Before he gets to Megiddo, he's going to do some stomping in Bozrah. Because he's coming to rule with a rod of iron and he shall crush the nation. Put that in your theology. <laughs> I see all these Hollywood movies continually creating a greater positioning of the satanic so people admire more the satanic and are becoming more comfortable with looking at all kinds of demonic looking things. It's, it's a strategy. Yeah, creating all these various different alien beings that all the, were, all the nations of the earth unite against and defeat so that we can be all happy about ourselves because we're so great. Because that's where they want to classify Papa. Strategy. But Satan may try as he will, he has already lost. I pray tonight that he loses for you. I pray tonight that Satan never wins another day in your life again. I pray you never be able to influence your mind and your thinking. I pray in the name of Jesus you'll never live another day for him. I pray that every day will be holy and consecrated to seeking God. I pray that each man, steward, each man over his house will be able to lead his family into deep intercessory prayer and lift up their voice and cry for revival. I, I wonder where the intercessors are. They've gone. Where the, the intercessors? When I was a little guy, it was so, so common. You would have these older women and older men who just gave themselves continually to the Lord. Boy, when they, were, when they started praying in the meeting, my, it was the sound of heaven. Come on now. What happened to them? What happened to the Jenny Wilkerson's? And there's a long list of people that I can name. What's happened? People have been too influenced by the world and their own ideas of who God is. They've had wrong models. We need a revival. We need revival, people. We need to pray for revival. We need to pray for a fresh stirring. Listen, I, I was around in the days when the old, the old preachers and men of God would talk about how conviction left the church. I was there at the supper table, late night table, listening to all the men of God say about how the Holy Ghost conviction was so powerful. And I was in those, I was in those meetings in the early 60s. I was really young, but I remember them. They would talk about how before this, before, it's like when the 70s came, I heard all these guys, late 60s, 70s say, where's Holy Ghost conviction going? What's happened? Rebellion has swept not only the nations of the world, but the church. Where's the moving of the Holy Ghost that brings a great fear of God and sorrow for sin? How do people sit so stubbornly, so defiantly, against the anointing.
No, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is how I listened to this for many years of my life. See, I come from the old tradition, which is the new tradition, which is the tradition of the church, which is the ways of God, which are futuristic as much as they are past, because he doesn't change. Many people gave their life to the Lord and Jesus revival and Jesus movement in the late 60s and early 70s and said, oh, we don't need these older men of God. They just legalists anyways. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And they cut themselves off from the flow of the church. They did. And started teaching all kinds of things that sounded right, but they were subtle heresy. You listen to me. Listen to me. Dear people, I just... I want you to understand God's calling us. You must understand homosexuality, lesbianism, adultery, all these evil things speaking against the ministry. It wasn't long ago the ministry was the most reverent position in the earth. That's why they called us reverend. And nobody calls nobody reverend anymore unless you're a priest in the Catholic Church. Huh? Reverend means one to be feared. It's what it literally means, one to be feared. One to be reverenced. Literally means one to be feared. Which is by and large just lost. Hollywood's made, made the preachers, the people, the, the, the craziest folks, the biggest hypocrites, the people that are going to, you know, hurt you, wound you, they're bumping the mass murderer, whatever. That's what Hollywood's done to the preacher. Huh? Made him the crazy man. Made him the charlatan. Made him the big, made him the big scandal on. You don't think that's in the atmosphere? You don't think it's working against your mind and the minds of evil around you? You don't, affect, you don't think that affects the flow of God and the move of the Spirit? It does. There's got to be, we've got to cry out to God. We've got to cry out to God for revival. You have to cry out to God for revival. We have to cry out to God. Is there a religion in the earth? Lots of religion. Lots of religion. Is every expression in the Christian church the expressions of the Holy Ghost and the mind of Christ? By no means. By no means. By no means. I mean, you could see that just by a simple examination of the Word of God, what Father's will that we do would be. scripture to you how many of you would like to be a slave to Satan anybody want to be a servant of death anybody interested in being a servant of death I'm glad to hear that some of you don't know because a few people didn't even respond the good news is the Lord Jesus to restore you, bring you back into life so you can live and reign, live in this life, and reign in this life by one Christ Jesus. Do you think that people are going to be impressed by all the scriptures you memorize? They're going to be depressed. Do you think that anybody's going to rejoice in your intellect? They're going to think you're out of your mind. But I'm going to tell you what will change the world. The anointing of the Holy Ghost flowing through you, revealing Jesus in your life. Huh? You think anybody's going to be impressed with your, your, your vision of what your great things you're going to do in God? No one's going to be impressed with that. They are going to be impressed with your love and your humility that's taking over your life by the power of the Holy Ghost. They are going to be impressed by the flow of the Holy Ghost, the beauty and the splendor of His presence. People, we're going to have to have a revival.
Some that you wake up with every morning. Some that you go to bed with every night. Some that's on your heart all day. Father, the great moving of your spirit. You won't be led astray when that's in your heart to do your will, O Lord. When you want to see the great movings of God that will break the yokes off of people who are in bondage to sin, who will spend an eternity without God. Unless something happens, a miracle takes place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to say this. Hollywood is able to do what it is able to do because the church has abdicated. Because the church enjoyed the immorality. Thus the door was open for Satan to do what, is, what he wanted to do because the hinderer did not stand against the iniquity. Our society and our culture here in the United States of America is completely being eroded out from underneath us because the church welcomes sin into its midst. Pornography has taken over the earth because pornography found a welcome home in the hands of God's men and servants. Thus, there was nothing to hinder it. One night, it was 1987, I was standing in a meeting and the greatest ministry that existed in the earth stood up and he was saying, we need to boycott 7-Eleven. He was going down this list. There was 30, 40,000 people in the meeting right here in San Diego. And he's talking about these things. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And everybody's yelling. And I lifted up my voice. And I declared, this is, no one could hear me. But the, everybody was screaming, yeah, I'm getting stopped pornography, boycott 7-Eleven, all this other stuff. The Spirit of the Lord cried out to me, you opened up the door. You abdicated your authority. God gave you a place to reign in this life by Him. And you have been subjected to it and subdued by it. Three years later, it came out. I don't mop the floor for my wife all the time. But I was mopping the floor for her, one of those few times I mopping the floor for my dear wife, plus her. The Lord always speaks to me when I'm doing those kinds of things. But praise God, He don't only speak to me when I'm doing those kinds of things. <laughs> and I lifted up my voice, and I'm mopping the floor, and no one's there to hear me. Your days are numbered upon the earth. Your ministry has come before the Lord. It's been removed. Huh? Within that end of that week, it was announced. The ministries that led the nation of the earth, three, what would be called three great ministries, one after another, capitulated. The immorality and the iniquity that was in those ministries were exposed and had been going on for years. We saw in visions and dreams where people would come in to the meeting and they were fed the flesh of men. Huh? Just fed the flesh of men. What comes right out of that which pleases men, what men can do and say to gain an advantage and make merchandise over God's people. And so the sin and iniquity, look at the impact, look at the changes in the moral condition of the United States of America in the past 30 years and look at it, there's an exponential decline. It's an exponential decline. And do you think that you can just sit back and point a finger and say, oh my, oh poor people, oh God help us, I can't believe how messed up the world is. It's your fault. It's our fault 
Father's given us the position. He's given us the cure. He's given us the place to reign with him, to stop the tide of iniquity, to command the sun and moon to stand still till the battle is won. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Who will rise to the occasion to be anointed of the Holy Ghost, to stand in Christ's stead? Who will rise to the occasion to walk as the mighty men and women of God in this earth? with one single purpose, and that is to destroy the works of the devil, with one single purpose, and that is to hold back the mystery of iniquity. Because I'm telling you right now, we are the ones that withhold, and God has not yet removed us. He's not yet taken us out of the way. So long as we hear, Satan's work can only go so far. He can only do so much. But after that, we are taken out of the way. The full worship of Satan will be revealed in the earth. With every kind of immorality, things that the mind could not even imagine. Things that the mind could not even imagine. But right now, it's time for you and I to take up the mantle that's been given. Take up the mantle of the anointing. Take up the mantle of the Spirit. It's time. It's time. It's time to step into this place of divine authority, to consecrate yourself unto the Lord, to give yourself over to, to Him as a living sacrifice, offering up this wonderful living sacrifice every day that is holy and acceptable unto Him by Christ Jesus. You better not sit down in front of a television and be entertained by that which steals the souls of men. Or you're worshiping something when you do when you give your heart's affection to the entertainment of it you're worshiping something and you won't be able to give your affection in here not where not you can give your affection over there where it's just really isn't about the anointing it's about kumbaya it's about everybody singing together now, you know what i'm saying you know what i mean by that it's about everybody just you know being together and camaraderie of a big group of people all come on man talking about the fires of his divine presence and glory the reality of God Almighty being manifested and revealed through our lives we need to take our place stand with me we need to take, we need to take our place we need to take our place people we need to take our place who will serve who will serve the Lord yes Lord you see that you hear that Lord, as for me and your church here, we will serve you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Senhor Jesus. Tonight, I want to pray for people here in this place that lack the fire of God in their life. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the fire of God. I'm talking to you about a passion that burns with worship, with praise, with boldness. I'm talking about a passion, a longing, a desperation of the heart that burns with you. Dear people, I want you to understand, Papa's not really interested in what you do. He's interested in you. To start with, that he can have your heart. That he can have your affections. He desires truth in the inner part. There is no feeling the place of relationship with doing a bunch of stuff. Father wants the fire of the Holy Ghost burning in your life. For me, the fire of the Holy Spirit is more about the giving of an offering than anything else. It's not, the, it's not really the burning up of something bad. I don't believe that. Personally, I don't believe that. Because the fire of God was always centered around consuming the offering from off the altar. As soon as an offering was laid before God and it was holy and acceptable, the fire of God came down out of heaven and consumed that offering. I'm talking about you allowing God to come and pour out heaven's glory upon your soul so that every part of your emotions and passion and appetite and affection is consumed with his glory, his presence, his fire. You turn, in other words, into smoke kind of thing, you know. Hallelujah. 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 That's a holy and acceptable, it's a holy and acceptable offering that God sends a fire on. Hallelujah. And God has made us acceptable by Christ Jesus by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm here tonight to make sure that everybody in this place who's willing should be an offering found unto God, holy and acceptable, offered by Christ Jesus so that God can send the fire of His Holy Ghost. Not just some kind of little experience, not just some kind of a little shout, not just some kind of a little expression. I'm talking about a fire of God that burns day in, day out with the glory of His mighty presence, with a passion for His goodness, with a glorious manifestation of His love. can't be a culture of standing in line you know to just get blessed again people living from one touch to the next touch from one prayer line to the next prayer line there's a, oh, there's a place uh, to walk in the manifest presence of God to walk in a glory realm with him where that uh, where that fellowship is all the time not sometime all the time and then and then and at that place and in that realm you will take as a as a member in the body of Christ a ministry that the Holy Spirit will give to you which is supernatural miraculous which cannot be contained it won't sound like dried tinkling cymbals brass won't sound passionateless won't sound and feel like a mental ascent with no heart in it. It won't look like empty husk. Are you listening to me? You will decide for yourself as to whether or not 
you will participate with the fire of the Holy Ghost that exists in this place. You decide whether or not you come alongside of that which God the Holy Ghost is doing in His church throughout the world. You decide whether or not the fire of God will be able to fall upon your life. Whether you burn for Him or just smoke for Him. I tell you right now, an offering left on the altar too long starts smelling really bad. You listen to me. An offering left on the altar too long smells really bad. <laughs> Are you with me? Are you with me? I'm telling you, an offering that's not acceptable by the Lord to the Lord's gonna be sitting on the altar for a long time. It's gonna be smelling. It's time. It's time now that there be no perpetual backsliding. It's time now. It's time now. Did everybody get what out of, out of whatever situation or circumstances that you've made bigger in God, bigger than God? Somebody said, how can I know I've made a circumstance or a situation bigger than God? Because it has control of your emotions right now. Many circumstances and situations make people sad and prove that by the disposition of their attitude that that is their God and that that is bigger than God and they cannot exalt the name of Jesus above all of those things. And Father wants to change that for you tonight. Because he's not going to listen to you tell him how that you would serve him and be happy with him if your circumstances would better. You'll have to go consult one man who lived big for God who a whole book of the Bible was written about his name is Job God's champion are you listening to me God didn't write a whole book about a single person like he did Job what a champion what a witness what an example what a model what a testimony someone who would stand against all the forces of hell that were allowed to personally come out against him almost as a type of Christ in many ways and would not bend and would not bow and would not move from his position of fellowship what a champion what great things he wrought for mankind because he stood in that place of intercession he stood in the gap will you stand in the gap for your family Will you stand in the gap for your community? Will you stand in the gap for your workplace? Will you stand in the gap for your county, for the region of this nation that you live in, for the state, for this nation? Will you let God cause you to stand in the gap for other nations? It begins by the passions of your heart being poured out to Him. And you can't do it until you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. All you'll be able to do is just a little of this. You'll be able to do a little of this. Huh? A little, little hoot every once in a while. A little, a little hallelujah. But when you get baptized, the Holy Ghost is going to come out. It's going to come out like a flow of heaven and it'll continue. And you don't have to wait till next week. And you don't have to wait nine months long and lay another hour. Hallelujah. 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 Papa wants to put the intercession. God wants to put the prophetic word. He wants to put the anointing to prophesy and speak on his behalf. Pray on his behalf. Pray what is the mind of the Spirit. He wants to put it on people in this place tonight. He wants God also you. Oh, so my God, the Holy Ghost wants to give you such a boldness. Father wants to put such a boldness upon you. You the leader, not the follower in your school. 
You're the leader, not the follower in the group or the community of people that you belong to. You shine with a burning passion for God. You're ready to pray. and go, You'd rather go to a prayer meeting and read the Bible than do whatever else everybody else is doing. I'm saying there's a passion and fire of God and a change. It'll change the generation around you. It'll change the people. It'll stop what Satan is doing. It'll stop his, it'll stop his craft. It'll stop his strategy and his devices. Father, teach your hands to war this bow of steel is broken with your arm. No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. He'll give you special giftings and special anointings like he did in the men, uh, the men and the women of old, whether they would be able to, to, to defeat whole armies by themselves. Defeat, defeat whole nations with a divine anointing that was given. I'm talking about understanding how to flow in this anointing. Your whole school will be transformed once this fire begins to burn. All you do is walk around happy in Jesus, burning with the fire and the glory of God, just going to the next class. I'm telling you right now, if, if suddenly Satan is no longer able to oppress you and put sadness and sorrow and sedate and, and self-interest upon your life and cripple you with all the things that belong to this earth, you just find yourself captivated by him, your heart raptured up in glory. I'm telling you, telling you, it will change everything around you. That's how Elijah lived. It's how Jesus lived. It's how Paul lived. Paul was the hardest case. In the book at the end of Romans, Romans chapter 16, he talks about his kinsmen who were, who were a part of the company of saints before he was. I guarantee you they're praying for him. See, he had kinsmen that are already baptized in the Holy Ghost following Jesus from the very beginning. And then he stood there watching someone who had the fire of God upon them, so much so their face shone like an angel. And he couldn't get that out of his mind. Plus his, plus his kinsmen are praying. What a champion, the hardest heart the most religious, most, most defiant person alive standing against the gospel of Jesus Christ. Melted. Melted by the presence of a Holy Ghost witness. And then the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. You tell me prayers won't change things. You tell me prayer won't change things. You tell me prayer won't change things. There's people in this place tonight, listen to me. You have family members who've left this church and they not right with God. And if you would burn with the fire and the presence of God and allow the truth of God's word to be in your mouth and in your heart, you'd be upon your knees praying for them, the hearts would true, soon be changed. Soon be filled with truth. You have family members that are not saved. They maybe never came to this place, but God will do the same thing for them. You've got friends. You've got acquaintances. I was so blessed by Richard. He got here. And he went over in the, the other building. He goes, my goodness, the fire of God. He started dancing all over the place. Yeah, the fire of God is here. He got over here. He starts, my goodness, the fire of God. He starts dancing, dancing all over. Yeah, the fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God is here. There's no question about the, what, what's going on in this place. There's no question about the fight of hell. All we need to get, do is get in close together. God's got an anointing that brings people under, under His divine authority, completely submitted to His will. And He's got His way of doing it. He's got His order in His house. He's got a special anointing the way He set it up, and there's nobody going to circumvent it. Every one of us are going to have a lot of long suffering and patience from the Father to learn how to participate with it, but He's going to have it His way. And when we finally resolve ourselves to let God have His way, fires fall.
fire fall. All the Lord is doing is trying our hearts. Trying our hearts. Trying our hearts. I'm going to have the real deal. I'm going to have the real thing. I'm not going to have a little thing or something. Huh? A kind of thing. I'm going to have the real thing. Men of God talked about there's three phases of ministry. Most people never get past the first one. Great men of God have preached this. I write unto you, little children, babes, because your sins are forgiven you. Most people never get past that. In a modern day church, sad. Very few people go into the second phase of ministry and walk with God. I write unto you, young men, because you're strong. The word of God abides in you and you have conquered the wicked one. You stop him whatever he's doing. He don't move past you. Uh, here you go. And here you stay. And you go no further. Amen. For my house to begin with. Satan will not touch my house. You don't think Father want, you think Father's going to keep that? He's on my side. So long as I walk with him, he's on my side. So long as you walk with him, he's on your side. He'll take your part. Come on. And then I don't just do it for my house. I do it for my extended family. Huh? I don't care what's going on. I'm day is going to get right. I learned, these, I learned these things. I learned these things from the men and women of faith around me. Huh. And I taught, them for the, I taught it from the word as a, from, a, from a child third phase I write unto you fathers because you've known him who is from the beginning I plan on being a father in the faith amen I plan on being a father in the house amen hallelujah I plan on going all the way with God hallelujah <laughs> I plan on taking a hold of everything that he said I'm planning, I'm planning, I'm not planning, I'm not planning on going and taking the nations of the earth. I'm talking about, I'm planning on walking the fullness of the measure of the maturity of his ministry. The result of that would be huge. The result of that would be huge. The result of that would be huge. Jesus ministered to one nation, his own nation, Israel. Since you and me take care of the rest. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody gonna go and witness of him and be a witness of his resurrection and, and who he is until they baptize in the Holy Ghost and fire. And that's the biggest problem with world missions. So many people call them they don't have the fire. Uh, they got a budget, right? They got a budget, some books, and a camera. That's all they got. Are you with me? They need they need the fire of God. We're going to make intercession. We're going to cry out to God till a fire falls, fills up that whole room in there. Did you check out that room in there? I'm going to tell you right now, I'm here praying, crying out to God. I want his fire to burn. His fire will burn up all the chaff and burn up all the dead wood and burn up everything that doesn't belong to him as well. Huh? I don't want to be a part of that fire. I'm part of the fire he sends upon his offering that's totally acceptable and burns for him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not mixing up the two offerings over here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm not going to be amidst the fire that is burning amongst, amongst Nadab and Ab Abihu. I'm not going to be in that fire. Uh -uh. For he shall be sanctified among all those who draw near unto him. Hallelujah. I'm, 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 I'm not going to be in that fire that burned among Dathan and his crew. I'm going to be over here on the fire. It's on the altar. Hallelujah. It's on the altar that Elijah made. Hallelujah. Let the God who answers by fire, let him be God. Let God who answers. I say this. Let God, let God who answers by fire, uh, answers you by fire. Let him be your God. Let him be your God from this day forward. Let him be your God from this day forward. It changed the way you talk and the way you think. 
He'll show you how to put on Christ Jesus and make no provision for the flesh. He'll show you how to walk in heaven in a divine anointing. He'll show you how to walk in pleasures forevermore. He'll show you how to walk humbly before your God, to do justly, to love mercy. You want God to give you his best, you need to give him your best. You want to give God half measures, he's going to give you half measures. <laughs> you want God to be passionate for you, you're going to have to get passionate for him. And I'm telling you right now, you're not going to really get passionate until the fire comes at you. You're going to have to be born again, first of all. And then my mola by a for by a shiko makate. Hallelujah! 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 the gates of their enemy and the, the, of course the fire of God beat me to this saying it because you just stay right there you stand there in that place Mr. Brad Scott I'm telling you the anointing of the Holy Ghost rests so strong upon you no trick of Satan though he raises up his mighty angels and come after you with all the force of hell be able to stop you Maybe this, when they gonna be able to stop Joshua. <laughs> Amen. Father, I thank you for the anointing that you placed upon my son. I thank you, Father God, for filling him with your word. Nothing shall stop but no weapon formed against him, no satanic power of darkness, no matter how ruthless or how it comes or how it slithers in. He's got to uh, flee seven ways. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the anointing upon his heart, upon his lips. Thank you, Father, for these special giftings of miracles and signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I've known since he was a little child, the Lord would raise him up to stand before kings and presidents with an authority of the word of God. 
And you guys are gonna get to you guys are gonna get to hear him preach on Wednesday night as he's in the formative years of that which God is doing. I know, yeah. Satan comes and he tries to do things. He's got some kind of demonic assignment, but Father reveals every one of them and puts everything, everything that Satan tries to do, he stops it. Stops it. So shall it be for your house that you serve the Lord. So shall it be for your house that you walk with Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now I'm petitioning you this week. Pray and cry out to God and make intercession for the saints. Offer up petitions before the Lord. Let God know that you are desperate about being a part of the solution of the remedy of the revival that you want to be a key to the great outpouring of his spirit right now in this time and in this generation he'll hear you he will answer he'll send his fire when people are passionate about god anointing them it doesn't take long to get anointed you don't have to stand around 30 40 years waiting on something hallelujah hallelujah yeah baby come up here baby I'm passionate to share these two verses with you. <laughs> Psalm 101, verses 2 and 3. I, this is the consecration that I want to have. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray that you'll set up prayer meetings in your home. That you'll have Holy Ghost meetings in your home. You'll be looking to lift up your voice. You'll gather people together with you who know how to pray, who know how to touch heaven. I'm not talking about sitting there singing a little lullaby sermon to Jesus. I'm talking about people who know how to passionately pray, know how to give themselves over to touching heaven so heaven can touch them. And watch what God will do. Let's just do this. Let's do this. I'm so blessed by the labor and the sacrifice to get this building ready for Joshua. I, 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 I was a little dis, disappointed that I felt like Joshua when he came on Wednesday night was on a, like a leash, you know. I, it was like being restrained and didn't make me happy. But he told me, that he wants to spend some time with me in, in November, so we're planning on going to go and do that. And we just believe in God to do some radical things. He, he doesn't really understand America. And, and he feels like a part of this church. The church this church is a part of him. And, and the thing about it is, is they, they're sending more Chinese missionaries to the unreached people groups than any other single group. And so it's such a blessing to be able to be a part of that, to serve in that ministry. But, but I, the Lord just, must understand, the Lord has just put a passion on the inside of me, put a passion on the inside of us for, for only the things of heaven. We're not, we're not satisfied with any half measures. Not satisfied with casual worship can't tolerate sorry pray for me we can be long suffering towards it till God's people will hear us and, and, and respond cooperate with what God's doing amen hallelujah let's just touch heaven let's just touch heaven 
Touch heaven at home. It's going to be radical in your life when you get here. Hallelujah. Come gather together with us. Come gather together with us. In the spirit. From this day forward. Like never before. Come reach into the realms of God's divine provision. Hallelujah. Be a part of what Father's purpose to do right here now at this last day of time in this season in our generation. Amen. Wow, the wonderful presence of Jesus is here. The weightiness of his glory is here in, here in the place. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to walk out of this place tonight knowing that as surely as the thief, Satan, and his influences have come to kill, steal, and destroy, Christ Jesus has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And he's purposed that you walk in this abundant life, that you know the glory of this realm of walking out this heavenly life with him. So don't let anything get in the way of that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Before you go tonight, I want you to hook up with me for a miracle. A miracle that's in the realms of financial provision. A miracle for you. And a miracle for this ministry. Miracle for the things that God's placed within the framework of our responsibility to do. And I know that I know that it's going to be a sacrifice. I know that it's going to, for some of you, it's going to be in, in some respects more than that you're really able to do from a budgetary point of view. But the Lord knows that. He knows. He knows when you do something that's beyond the budget budget. He knows when you do something that's not convenient for you to do. He knows when you give out of that which you, as Jesus said, you're living, what you're going to eat off of. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What, you're, what, what you're going to use for, for, for clothing and for, for basic provision for your life. And I, I want to assure you within the context of this miracle, Father is not going to let you down. You're not going to find yourself with less. I promise you, by the word of the Lord, you're going to find yourself with more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't withhold from the Lord. Don't withhold, any, don't withhold from Him. It is the means by which He's going to bless you more than you thought possible. Because He's not going to withhold any good thing from you. So I want you to come worship the Lord with your tithes, with your offerings, with your giving. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, Jesus is going to prosper you. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is going to prosper you. I'm telling you, Father's going to prosper you. Hallelujah. 